Hey guys, it's Zeno coming up on A to Z. What to look for on Sunday with Desmond Ritter. The Hawks get more bad news and it's the most wonderful time of the year. This is A to Z with Mark Zeno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. How did we get here? If you're not the number one pick, guess what? You have no guarantee. That's where you are. And it starts. Does that make me a genius? Yes. Now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you, go beyond the numbers. Welcome in. We are live. It is a football Friday here as we are in the middle of December in the home stretch of the NFL season. We got a lot to get to today. I uh, want to remind you guys to give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zino, M A R K Z I N N O. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Give a thumbs up and a like to all the content there as well. Check us out on Roku TV. However, you get your Roku TV, the Amazon Fire Stick, download that Roku TV app and check out Locked On Sports Atlanta and A to Z every single day. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's start with Desmond Ritter. I think we've exhausted this whole thing. This entire week, um, and we are here. We are kind of like right on the precipice of this young man beginning his NFL career, and we've talked about a variety of different things, you know, including how he's going to handle the pressure, you know, the environment in the Superdome, what to expect out of him offensively, how much will he throw, will he be more accurate. We've talked about the Falcons' draft strategy as it pertains to Desmond Ritter. You know, how is he going to play in these four games? What is the record? How? What do they do? How much can you really tell after four games that this is your guy? All these things have been on the table over and over and over again. And they're all fair. And maybe it's just the excitement. Maybe it's just the hype. And maybe it's just all the things that you want when you draft a quarterback that you take and you see the very beginning of it and hope and just hope that he's everything you thought he could be and would be and more. I've tried to harp on you guys not to put that kind of pressure on him, not to expect too much from him, not to look at these four games as a trajectory in a direction, to look at them individually based off of the opponent, based off of the situation, based off of the game plan, and see what he can do. But moreover than that, what I have said, and I will go into deeper dive to it now about what you shouldn't do, is focus on his numbers. His completion percentage, guys, doesn't matter. Um, you know, how many passing yards he has doesn't matter. Uh, I, you know, you might throw an interception. Might not. You might throw three touchdowns. Might not. I'm not sure any of that matters. The interceptions matter from the standpoint of, look, you know, he's being paid to take care of the football. And, you know, not all interceptions are created equal, though. But again, I want to see. And we watched last night, Brock Purdy of the San Francisco 49ers, again, just seemed to be cool, calm, collected, and in control for the entire game. This was Mr. Irrelevant, and this was a guy who doesn't look like he has uh, taken his first two NFL starts. I mean, he just looks very comfortable. He looks like he's got a grasp on the offense. He looks like he understands what his coach wants him to do throughout the entire game. I think those things are things that you need to look for with Desmond Ritter. You know, is he a guy who's getting rid of the ball quickly? Is he a guy that that doesn't look like he understands protection, doesn't look like he understands the defense that's in front of him? And none of this stuff, by the way, should be anything, and I mean anything, that you are over the top like, you know, writing an indictment on him one way or another. Everybody's fair on that, but still, the grading of him is going to be so hard. And when we get together on Monday and we do this show again and we're recapping this game, we'll talk about all the things that we saw that we liked. We'll talk about all the things we saw that we didn't like. And, you know, I don't even know if anybody cares if the Falcons win the game. That's the strange part. Does anybody really even care? I don't know. I don't know if anybody cares whether they win or lose. I don't think anybody's getting upset if he throws for 300 yards, three touchdowns, and the Falcons lose the game. I I don't see that game script playing out personally, but, you know, what do I know? I genuinely think that people are more concerned with how he plays than necessarily the result. Arthur Smith will get up on the podium on Monday and tell you he cares about the result, period. Yeah, it's nice that his his quarterback played well and everything went the way they thought it was going to do, but guess what? He needs him to play well, and he needs to win the game. So, yeah. 
And and if he does win the game and the Falcons get one step closer to winning the division, they get one step closer to the playoffs. It's like, mm, okay, maybe, maybe we can, you know, maybe we can start to build on this, but still I implore everybody just to relax a little, know what to look for on Sunday, know what to look for at Desmond Ritter. Don't overthink it. Uh, and, and just be very much in tune with remembering this is a third round pick who uh, to this point we know isn't as talented as the players who went before him. That's the only fact we know. Doesn't mean he can't be successful. Doesn't mean he can't win. Doesn't mean he won't be good. There's a talent gap there between him and a first round quarterback. So keep that in your back pocket when you're doing the grading scale, because that ultimately is, you know, one of those things where, uh, you know, there is a whole lot of, I guess the right way to phrase this, there is a whole lot of, of nitpicking that we're going to do about everything that he does. And there's going to be a lot of questions to answer on Monday, good, bad, and different. Speaking of questions here, I uh, wanted to pivot to the Atlanta Hawks as they get more bad news. Clint Capella is going to be out for up to two weeks with a right calf strain. That's what the team announced yesterday. Suffered the calf injury in the fourth quarter of Wednesday's embarrassing loss to Orlando. Um, so now the Hawks are without DeJounte Murray. Uh, and they are without John Collins. And they are without Clint Capella. If the defense was bad before, wow. Unless uh, Aneka and Kongwu plays insanely good. Uh, here's what's going to happen. And I'm just looking at this objectively. The Hawks are going to go out there tomorrow and lose to a 7-21 and basketball team. That's my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if I'm going to be wrong. But it feels like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> they don't have anybody to defend for four quarters. And oh, by the way, let's remind everybody, and we've said this multiple times, but this was supposed to be the part of their season where they were supposed to get fat and happy. All they're doing is losing weight and losing games. It's not a pretty spot right now. And I told you yesterday, and I think it's the case, this thing could be headed for an implosion. This thing could be headed for, for, you know, something bad. I mean, when you turn the calendar to January, you got to go out on the West Coast. You're going you're gonna to face the Lakers at home on December 30th. But then you go to Golden State, Sacramento, face both L.A. teams over the course of the next, you know, week plus. And I know Golden State now is without Steph Curry, but still, I mean, you, uh, yeah, you got some problems. You got some real problems. I mean, what's left before the before that that December thirtieth game at home against Los Angeles, Charlotte tonight, Orlando, Chicago, Detroit, all at home, on the road to Indiana, back home for Brooklyn, and then again L.A. That's the rest of this month. They're fourteen and fifteen right now. They have let's call that seven games before the end of the year. They go four and three, they'll be at 500 as they hit January. They go three and four. Oh, okay. Now they're two games below 500. I'm doing the math for you. They go two and five. Yeah, it gets even bigger. But again, good luck with that because after you go to that West Coast swing, you come back to face the Milwaukee Bucks again. And then you got to go to Indiana and to Toronto. Come back for a defensive battle against Miami and go to Dallas against Luka before you play another team with a losing record. There you go. That's your schedule. It's not, I'm telling you, this thing could implode quickly. Just my assessment. I have no hard fact knowledge or anything. I, I just look at it and I don't, I don't think it ends well in any size, way, shape, or form. All right, coming up next, before we get to the most wonderful time of the year, which is college bowl season, a very interesting comment was made 
about a Georgia player. We'll get to that. First, a word from our friends at betonline.net. Fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including the NFL, college football bowl season, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in game betting, scores, podcasts, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action that's happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Um, okay. I found this interesting, and I'm going to play a clip for you here, and I want you to listen to it. Um, it is Todd McShay, uh, along with Mel Kuyper, and I think that's Field Yates. Uh, and, you know, Todd McShay, we talked yesterday about the mock draft that he did that has Will Levis going to the Falcons. He had Jalen Carter as the number three overall prospect and then possibly going second overall to the Seattle Seahawks. If you didn't hear this, listen to the comments that he makes about Jalen Carter and what could affect his draft status. It's interesting with Carter because we we all agree it doesn't take a super scout to figure out that he's a phenomenal player in the interior. Mm -hmm. With Carter, there's some character issues. Does he get along with everybody? What's he like to deal with in the locker room? Those sorts of issues. I know it's early in the process, but I'm forewarning everyone out there. Carter's going to be kind of a hot button name when we talk about some of the intangible aspects of it. I think, though, with Pete Carroll sitting here, number two, who has a long history of taking guys that have quote unquote questionable character and then developing them and having it work out, it makes a lot of sense to me. But that will be the big discussion. It's not about his talent, it's yeah. not about his size, it's not about his explosive takeoff or finishing as a pass rusher. It's about the, the character. Do we want to bring that guy into the building? Okay, what to do with this? Uh, interesting. Now, we've never heard anything about Jalen Carter's character. Uh, never heard, I've never heard anything about it. Uh, I've never heard Kirby Smart say anything about it. You would think at this point in time we might have heard something about it um, and something that would lead us to believe that he might not be um, – you know, a guy that teams I want to take a chance on. I mean, we go through this every year. I'll never forget the knock on Aaron Donald. It wasn't his character. It was that he took plays off. Yeah, I remember that one. That was that was a good one. Whoever put that one out there was a real winner. Yeah, he takes plays off, sure. Takes plays off after the Super Bowl. Um, and the defensive of the year player. So, you know, whatever. But it's just interesting. A lot of people were, were, were sniping at Nick Shea saying he should have said it or should have provided receipts, this, that, and the other. I mean – where these sources come from, who he talks to, this, that, and the other, we're never going to know, and that's fine. And some of this stuff is white noise that can be ignored. Some of it isn't. But, you know, there's a general sentiment, uh, of course, that, you know, um, that when it comes to, um, when it comes to, you know, talking like this about a player's character, it's below board unless you can back it up. I don't know that it is or it isn't, but, you know, it just kind of seems like, hey, uh, we need to be a little bit better than that. So, you know, make of that what you will. I don't really know what to make of it. I took note of it. I heard it. I'm willing to move on from it. That's about it. Uh, but Jalen Carter is going to go play. He's going to be a top 10 pick. I, he's not going to, just because of his talent, he's not going to fall that far. Someone is going to let him or someone's going to take him and take a chance on him because he is super talented. All right, uh, guess what? It's Friday, December 16th, and we have officially begun bowl season. Um, if you're going to get up in here in a little bit and go watch the Bahamas Bowl between Miami of Ohio and UAB, huh, good for you. I'm going to watch it. Uh, and make sure you check out UAB's Dwayne McBride. Um, he is a phenomenal running back. Uh, leads FBS in rushing with 1,713 yards, uh, and he did in one fewer game than Brown, Corman, Robinson. So uh, this is a guy who's going to be very uh, a player that you can draft. You know, this is a name you're going to start to hear in the draft. Somebody's going to shoot up draft boards when it's all said and done. But regardless of that, um, that's when bowl season kicks off. And we're going to go through a, a deal here. we got two games actually on uh, today on Friday. And then the second one is the Cure Bowl between Troy and UTSA. Probably two teams you guys have never heard about. But should be a very exciting game. A lot of throwing of the football around on both teams. A lot of teams like to put up points and they play fast. It's going to be a lot of fun here um, in that game. Then Saturday, you get the Fenway Bowl uh, between the Bearcats and the Cardinals. Interesting thing to note about this game here. 
you have Scott Satterfield, who was the coach of Louisville and now is going to be the head coach of Cincinnati. Yeah. And then, of course, you get on Saturday right here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the Celebration Bowl, which is the HBC Bowl, HBCU Bowl, Jackson State, Deion's team against uh, the North Carolina Central Eagles. That one's good. Uh, New Mexico Bowl later that night, Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl between Fresno State and Washington State. Really, really, really like the over in that game. Um, and then we get uh, the Lennon Tree Bowl, Southern Miss against Rice. Florida and Oregon State uh, coming up on, what was that, the 19th or oh, 17th? Sorry, that's a uh, Saturday, not, not the 18th. My, my days are all mixed up here. But again, we're just rolling through here with Bulls nonstop, nonstop, with the exception of Sunday the 18th. That's right. They don't play Bulls on NFL Sundays smartly. They don't do that. But uh, we're, we're at a time right now. I think we're going to get like 27 straight days of football, even on Christmas Day, which is pretty awesome. Get a bowl game on Christmas Day, too. The game out in Hawaii. Um, or it's on Christmas Eve, sorry. The Hawaii Bowl between Middle Tennessee and San Diego State. Not on Christmas Day. That's why they're not going to play in there. You'll get NFL football. But still, you keep going, guys. We're going to get football nonstop all the way through. And uh, I'm loving every minute of it. So don't sleep on bowl season. Ton of fun. Uh, absolutely one of the best, uh, best, best, best times of the year as we you know, sing nonstop a year, but take all this stuff in, man. Some of these bowls are really fun and exciting. A lot of these teams you don't know, but still, uh, it's just great to see. And if you're like me, obviously in a semi-degenerate gambler, you know, these are always opportunities to, uh, to look at these games and enjoy them for a different reason. So yeah, by the way, uh, as of the time of this recording, look at our watch this Friday morning, uh, still no Dansby Swanson sign. Just throwing it out there. Yankees got Carlos Rodon, if that's, you know, a thing you care about. But free agents keeps going off the board, and everywhere, the boy's holding strong. You got to give him credit. He is holding strong and not signing yet. Maybe we'll get something later today. We'll see. All right. Uh, before we move on to my NFL picks for the weekend, uh, I will bring them to you here uh, in things that I like, games that I like. And let's get to a shuffle of wisdom. Brace yourselves, because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. All right, real quick, Shovel to me. I have to tell you about checking out Locked On Falcons and making that your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Now for our regular Shovel of Wisdom, hit me up on Twitter, at Mark Zeno. Use the hashtag Shovel of Wisdom. And today my shovel goes to former President Donald Trump. I know some of you may be thinking there's a lot of variety of reasons why you could do that, but this was just, to me, so he had a grand announcement. It was a big announcement. And if you didn't see this last night, the big announcement was that he's creating like digital trading cards. They cost $99. Uh, it looks like there's a picture of the former president as a pilot in Top Gun. Another one of them hitting a golf ball. Another one as an astronaut. And one of, of a, I guess he's in the Wild West. Is that what we're looking at here? Uh, I don't even know if this is what I'm looking at here. It's a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit weird. Uh, it's also a little bit pricey. What does a digital trading card get you? I don't exactly know, but apparently there's also a contest around these things or like a, a, an entry you're in that if you buy X number of them or you're getting into sweepstakes, you can get a Zoom call with Trump, around a round of golf with Trump, uh, a mall cocktail hour with Trump, Miami dinner with Trump. And if you buy 45 of them, you get to go to a, a, a gala dinner. Okay. Um, Again, I'm not into trading cards. Uh, you know, I was when I was 11, and they were baseball, but that's either here or there. The other part of this, who, uh, people who get a show. What the hell are you doing? You know some of these things are going to be gag gifts at Christmas. You know somebody is buying these things as a gag gift at Christmas. But they're digital, right? So you can't even hand them out and, like, open up a present and get somebody mad at anyway. Good luck with your digital trading cards, Mr. President. There you go. Thank you. There is that. All right. Uh, let's get to the NFL here. And uh, the game's coming up this weekend. lot of divisional games. I'll tell you two things. 
So far this year, divisional underdogs were covering close to 60%. It's starting to tail off a little bit here in recent weeks. But also, divisional unders have been hitting at 60%. So you got a lot of divisional games. You had Seattle-San Fran last night. Um, you have Baltimore-Cleveland on Saturday, Miami-Buffalo on Saturday. Obviously, you get the Falcons and the Saints on Sunday. Um, who else do you have a divisional – wise giants and washington on sunday night so look in those specific directions let's start on a game on saturday that i like miami at buffalo um miami has lost two straight and they look to be reeling uh they've only scored 17 points in each of the last two games for a team that has been so offensively minded um this entire time and a team that really you know uh has been scoring so much early on Here's the thing with this game here. It's a revenge spot for Buffalo. That matters. Buffalo only has one home loss, and that was the freak loss to the Vikings. Miami is just three and four on the road this year overall and two and five against the number. But at seven and a half against the Bills team, that's six, six, and one against the number this year. It's a hard buy point on Buffalo. Weather is supposed to be awful. And I mean awful in this spot um, with snow and a nor'easter coming in. I don't think either team's going to score that much, perfectly honest with you. But uh, Miami right now is in such a must-win spot because, you know, a couple of weeks ago they were battling the Bills for the AFC East. Um, with the rest of their schedule that they have the rest of the way out, they could miss the entire playoffs. So I think Miami would be competitive. I like them to keep it close. You get me over touching there at seven and a half. Uh, I will give you I, – I will take the Miami, the Miami Dolphins. Next up, probably my favorite game of the week. Philadelphia at Chicago, and the Eagles are laying nine. Now, this looks like a mismatch on paper, and the Eagles should keep rolling. The Bears seem like they're headed for a top three pick in the NFL draft. Philadelphia's got a great ground game. Chicago has an awful run defense. All those things are true. However, two other things are at play. Most importantly, Bears are off a bye, and Justin Fields is back healthy. The bye has nothing to do with it, but Justin Fields is 100% healthy. The Bears at home this year average over 210 yards rushing per game. That's the best in the league. Uh, the Eagles are just two and four against the number on the road this year. They're in a classic look ahead spot with the Cowboys up on deck. The trash talk between the Eagles and Cowboys has already started. You know both those teams are looking ahead to the game next week. This is just way too many points. Justin Fields will do more than enough to keep this thing close. I expect it to be high scoring. And if that's the case, guess what? I'll take the points in a game that has a lot of variance. Uh, another game that I like this week, which is really, really tough to, to predict here. Tennessee is in L.A. to face the Chargers. Chargers are laying three, maybe three and a half. The Titans have lost three in a row. Their offense is completely stalled, and the Chargers seem to be in tight games every single week. Um, that said, you have a weird thing going on here. Um, 80%, 87% of the money is on the Titans, and the line hasn't moved yet. And it might even drop to two and a half here, which tells you that you're going to get some of that reverse line movement. I'm sorry, 87% of the money is on the on the Chargers, not on the Titans. You're going to get some of that reverse line movement if it drops to two and a half, which is very, very telling. Titans are five and two against the number on the road this year. Um, the Chargers, this is a classic by low spot on Tennessee. There's a little bit of overvaluing on the Chargers. They can't stop the run. It could be a huge day for Derrick Henry. I'm going to take the points with the Titans, especially at three and a half. So I think that's a really good number and a really good spot situationally for uh, Tennessee. You know, again, lose four in a row. That to me seems a little unlikely to say the least. So uh, I think that's a really good game. And um, let's go to Monday night. Rams at Packers. Uh, Baker Mayfield's heroics on uh, last Thursday night against the Raiders seem to have everybody fooled except odds makers because they're still going to lay a touchdown with the Packers. And even though Aaron Rodgers is healthy, there might be some speculation. It might be Jordan Love. Um, just remember this, folks. For 57 minutes of that game, Baker Mayfield sucked. He was terrible. He was absolutely terrible. He played well. In the final three, three, five minutes, whatever it was, against a soft prevent defense, uh, and they ma they managed to get a little bit lucky along the way. Guess what? Baker Mayfield's not good. 
newsflash, he's not good. Uh, and he won't be good here. Green Bay, still alive, you know, I guess in the playoffs. But again, it's cold. It's Green Bay. It's Aaron Rodgers in primetime at home where he never loses. Uh, as long as this thing stays at seven, I'm cool. I'll, I'll lay it with the Packers. This is not a good Rams defense right now. And guess what? Baker Mayfield's not a good quarterback. Save you the suspense. So uh, those are the games I like the most. I take an eye on, on Dallas and Jacksonville. Um, again, Dallas in a big look-ahead spot, laying points on the road uh, to Jacksonville. Seems to be playing really well right now. And so uh, uh, I would look at Jacksonville as a possible play. I'll definitely take a look at Houston. 14 points is what the Texans are getting. Kansas City's on the road for their third straight road game. Chiefs failed to cover his nine-point favorites last week in Denver. Um, and people, we, we have this perception that the Chiefs separate from teams. They don't. Flat out don't. They have two wins this year by more than 11 points. So, uh, you know, and, and for as bad as the Texans have been, they've only been beaten twice during this eight-game losing streak by more than 14 points. So they're competitive enough in games. Uh, I, I give a long, hard look at Houston if you can stomach it. And maybe even as well, I might back the Panthers this week again. Uh, they were my best bet last week. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that. Um, and I uh, I really, really like this Carolina Panthers defense in this spot here. Offense is a little bit better. Pittsburgh's got questions at quarterback. Numbers under a field goal. Carolina is home. I'm comfortable in that spot to lay it with them. So, uh, yeah. That's kind of where we are right now with the NFL. Uh, again, give me a follow on Twitter at Mark Zeno if you want some more of the uh, sports betting stuff. It's always there for you. want to remind you guys to make Locked On Falcons your very first listen every single day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's all available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That'll do it for this Friday, this Football Friday edition of A to Z. Again, remember, enjoy Desmond Ritter this weekend, folks. Try not to think too much about it. Try not to, uh, you know, get too swept up in all the Desmond Ritter hoopla. And uh, we'll be back to recap it all right here on Monday. Good luck with you, pets. Enjoy college bowl season this weekend. Have a good one. Back on Monday. You guys have a great weekend. Don't take any crap from anybody. See you. 